How y'all doing? So, saying I was gone for a while would be an understatement. Don't worry though, because I actually had a really good reason for being gone. I was working on my college applications, which is why I kind of disappeared for a few months. I wanted to do them well, so I had to dedicate a lot of time to them. So this had to be set aside for a little while. And honestly, I was like, mm, it's not gonna take that long. It did. Oops. Really should have given you some sort of warning. That's my fault, but I really didn't anticipate leaving for this long. But that's okay, because I'm back now. I'm not going nowhere! Okay, so at this point you're probably like, um, Hello? What are we doing? What are we making? Let me tell you. So I have been hearing a lot about Harry Styles lately, as have all of you, especially when it comes to this Vogue cover. So I was just thinking, okay, Harry Styles wears a lot of Gucci. Gucci on the Vogue cover, Gucci at his concerts, Gucci at the Met Gala, so why don't I take a look at Gucci? So I thought it would be interesting to look through their clothes and see if there was anything I was interested in recreating. And guess what I found? This, which is the Gucci Pussy Bow blouse. And whatever you're thinking, I know. I was a little taken aback by the name at first too. I was like, why is it called this? But after doing some research, I actually found out that this blouse is a symbol of feminism, which is where it gets its name from. So. I love it. I respect it. Okay. So we're going to be recreating that blouse in this video. However, I am going to be simplifying it a bit just because the original blouse does have a lot of complicated elements to it. Like it's a button down shirt. It has a collar. It has proper cuffs. It has pleats going down the shoulders. <laughs> no, thank you. I want to make a simplified version of this, mostly for you guys, because I know that there are a lot of beginners out there and my videos are a little bit advanced. So I want to make something that's easy to recreate so that if you don't have a lot of experience, you can recreate it too. But most importantly, I am doing this for me because it has been so long since I have touched my sewing machine that if I just jump into a very complicated project, I will 100% absolutely positively guarantee mess it up. I mean, I do that anyway, so maybe this won't be any different. So the only thing that you really need to create the pattern for the blouse and the sleeves is a cotton t-shirt. So this is the one that I'm gonna be using to trace out my neckline, the body, and the sleeves for my blouse but I'm gonna be doing something special to the neckline. So like I said before, the original blouse is a button down shirt, so you can just slip on the shirt, button it up, and you're all good, but I don't wanna do that. So I am just going to be creating a very simple blouse, one piece in the front, one piece in the back. But for the neckline, what I'm thinking of doing is, I'm thinking of doing a scoop neck that drops into a v-neck and the reason why I want to do that is because the scoop neck will give me something to attach my tie to because I'm obviously going to be creating a tie so that I can make a little bow in the front and I need a neckline to sew the tie onto so that's what the scoop neck is going to give me but then the v-neck is going to open it up and provide some space so that I can actually get the blouse over my head because let me tell you if you try to just sew a fitted scoop neck, it's not gonna get over your head because it is too tight. So it will rip, it'll stretch. It's not gonna work out, honey. So to cut out the front piece of the blouse, I folded my fabric in half, then folded my t-shirt in half so that the front was facing out. And I laid my t-shirt on top of the fabric, making sure the folds lined up. And then I traced out the neckline, the shoulder seam, the armhole, and the side seam. I did the same thing for the back, except this time, of course, the back was facing out instead of the front. And I just traced the exact same things. Front and back pieces are cut out, ready to go, so I have my front piece in my hands right here. I have two pins on the neckline marking how wide I want my v-neck to be. Then I have this one pin down here that's marking how deep I want my v-neck to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my front piece in half. I'm going to match up my pins up here, and then this pin down here should be on the fold line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a triangle going from these pins all the way down to this pin. And what that's going to do is that is going to create my v-neck so now we have my back piece which i'm holding upside down so let me just 
Now I have my back piece and obviously it has a much higher scoop neck just because it has to cover more of my back, of course. And uh, that's about it. Yeah. You need to add seam allowance when you're cutting out your v-neck. So this yellow pin and this yellow pin are marking the final width and the final depth of my v-neck. But I'm actually going to be cutting from this blue pin to this blue pin because that space in between these two pins is my seam allowance. And I need that seam allowance for when I'm going to be sewing my facing onto my v-neck just to close it all off. So just make sure that when you're cutting out your v-neck, you make it a little less steep and a little less wide. Because in the end, when you take away that seam allowance after sewing on your facing, it's going to be the final width and the final depth that you want. For this project, you really only need five pieces. You need your front piece, your back piece, uh, you need six pieces. Your front piece, your back piece, your two sleeves, the tie that's going to go around your neck, and then the facing that's going to close off the v-neck. So now that I have my front piece and my back piece, I just need to cut out my two sleeves. To cut out these sleeves, I did use a sleeve pattern that I already made, and so what I did is I folded my fabric in half, then folded my pattern in half, and laid it on top of my fabric to cut it out. And I did add some seam allowance at the bottom just because there wasn't enough. Then I used my first sleeve that I cut out as a template to cut out my second sleeve. I got my two sleeves right here, and if I uh, open it up just to show you what it looks like, it just looks like a big rectangle of fabric, but you can see how much volume I'm definitely going to get out of this sleeve because it is huge. She's a mammoth, of course. So the pattern that you saw me use to create these two sleeves is actually one that I made myself and I used it in that one blouse video that I have and I created it using the slash and spread method. So if you're not familiar with the slash and spread method, I will link a couple of tutorials so that you know how to trace a sleeve first and then how to use the slash and spread method to manipulate that sleeve pattern to create a voluminous balloon sleeve like the one that I've created. So I think that they're going to be able to explain it much better than I ever will. So. I think you should check them out just to familiarize yourself with the slash and spread method if you want to recreate this blouse. Now that I have cut out my two sleeves, the next thing I have to cut out is the tie that's going to go around my neck. And I know that I still have to cut out that facing that's going to go on my v-neck, but I'm going to hold off on that for now until after I've begun sewing because I think that's a later step that I don't need to do right now. So I'm going to cut out the necktie and then get to sewing. Since I wanted the final width of my tie to be two and a half inches, I had to multiply that by two and then add half an inch seam allowance on either side, which means I had to cut a six inch strip. So I measured six inches from the edge of my fabric and then once I got a good grip on it, I just ripped it. If you want straight edges on a woven fabric, it's easier to rip than to cut. To start sewing, put your front and back pieces right sides together and sew across the shoulder seams. With your pieces still right sides together, sew down the side seams. After sewing those four seams, I noticed that my fabric was fraying really badly, so to prevent it from fraying, I just used a zigzag stitch to sew over the edges to close them off. So I put this on just so that you can see what it looks like on an actual body so that I don't just hold up a flimsy piece of fabric. So this is what the body of the blouse looks like so far. Obviously I have a good sized armhole. I do have a scoop neck. It's a little bit lower than I wanted it to be, but that's okay because we're going to make it work. And then I have the v-neck here and I did also make that a little bit lower than I wanted it to be, but I do think that the tie will just cover it up anyway, so it's really not a big deal. So, yeah, that's pretty much all you have to see from this. Now we get to move on to my favorite part, which are the sleeves. For each sleeve, fold it in half so that it's right sides together and sew along that seam to create a tube. Just like I did for the shoulder seams and side seams of the blouse, I first used a straight stitch to close off the seam. And then afterwards, I used a zigzag stitch to sew over the edge of the seam to close it off and prevent it from fraying. And now that we've sewn up the majority of our sleeve, the next thing that we need to do is sew a basting stitch all across the top. Now, why do we need a basting stitch? 
Well, since we have a giant sleeve and a medium sized armhole, we need to scrunch up the top of that sleeve so that it can actually fit into the armhole. So in order to do that, we need to gather the top of the sleeve. And in order to gather, we need to put a basting stitch. So to do a basting stitch, you just have to set your machine to a straight stitch and set it to the highest stitch length that it can possibly go. Then you're just going to sew a regular straight stitch all across the top of your sleeve with your regular seam allowance and make sure to leave tails at the beginning and at the end of your stitch because you're going to be pulling on those tails in order to gather your sleeve. This is what it should look like once you've done that basting stitch and since I gave you like a five second tutorial on how to do a gathering, on how to do a basting stitch, I am just going to link you a tutorial, a much more in-depth tutorial, so I do actually understand how to do a gap, how to do a basting stitch if you're a beginner and you've never done it before. The only difference between the way I gather and the way she gathers in the tutorial is that she puts two rows of basting stitches and I only put one. I find that one works just as well, so I don't really feel the need to put two. I also might be too lazy to sew two and take them out later, but eh, we're not going to talk about that. So you might have noticed in the clip where I'm doing the basting stitch that I use white thread instead of green thread, and you're probably wondering, mm, why? Well, that's actually a little tip that I have for you. So a basting stitch is temporary. You are gonna be taking it out later after you put down your actual stitch. So you need to be able to see it in order to take it out. If you use the same color thread, so if I were to use green thread instead of white, it would be a little bit difficult for me to distinguish between my actual stitch and my basting stitch. So then I run the risk of snipping my actual stitch and having to re-sew it. In order to avoid all that work, I always use a different color thread when I'm doing a basting stitch because it allows me to spot it very easily later so that I can take it out with my seam ripper. Just a little tippity tip. Before you sew your sleeves onto your blouse, there's one tiny, tiny little thing that's actually very important that you need to do, and that is to mark the middle of your sleeve. So what you're gonna do is you're going to line up your sleeve seam, so I have it right here, I'm pinching it, and then you're going to find the middle of your sleeve, which is right here, and then you're gonna take a pin, which I have pinned to myself, and you're going to use that pin to mark the middle of your sleeve. So it's going to look like this, just like that. And why is this important? Let me explain. So when you're sewing your sleeve onto your blouse, you need to make sure that this sleeve seam lines up with your armpit seam. You know what, wait a minute. All right, that's better. So, as I was saying before, when you need, this is the wrong thing. As I was saying before, when you need to sew your sleeve onto your blouse, you have to make sure that this sleeve seam lines up with the armpit seam and that the middle, and that the middle of your sleeve, which I marked with a pin, lines up with the shoulder seam right here. If it doesn't line up when you're sewing your sleeve onto your blouse, then the sleeve might not fit properly in the end, so that's why it's important to make sure that you have these two points marked so that they line up to where they need to be. Because when you're gathering, everything could shift, so you have to make sure that it doesn't shift, if that makes any sense. Now it's time to actually sew these sleeves onto the blouse, so let's get to it. To pin your sleeves to your blouse, first start with your blouse inside out. Then you're going to take your sleeve, which should be facing right sides out, and you're going to put it into your blouse so that it comes out the armhole. Now in order to start pinning, what you're first going to do is you're going to match up those two seams that I talked about. So first match up the sleeve seam to your side seam, and then you're going to match up the middle of the sleeve to the shoulder seam. After that, you're going to pull on that basting stitch that you put so that your sleeve actually fits the armhole, and then you can just pin from there. My sleeves are finally attached to my blouse. I will be putting a zigzag stitch all over this, so don't worry, but I just wanted to show you how important it is that you use a different color thread for your basting stitch because it's very faint, but you can see that green thread that I used for my regular stitch, and then you can see the white thread that I used for my basting stitch really sticks out. So now it's gonna be really easy to spot that basting stitch and take it out with my seam ripper. So that's why it's a good idea to just use a different color thread because it's very noticeable. Again, ignore the turtleneck, but this is what the blouse looks like so far with the sleeves attached to it. Obviously the sleeves are very billowy, so we're going to be scrunching it up later just to make it a balloon sleeve. But for right now, we're actually going to be switching to the body of the blouse and we're going to do the v-neck facing. Now, do you need to constantly switch between the blouse and the sleeves? 
No, but I like being chaotic, so. So I drafted and cut out my facing from my fabric and I made it one and a half inches wide all around. So I have it right sides together on top of my blouse right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a straight stitch and my regular 3 8 inch seam allowance to sew all along the neckline. So I sat down in front of the machine and I was about to sew the facing onto the neckline. And then I realized, wait a minute, I made a mistake. I'm not mad actually, kind of disappointed, but... I still have my facing pinned to my blouse as you can see, but I realized that I don't need a facing for the entire neckline, which is what I cut out. I need a facing only for the v-neck part of the neckline in the front. Now for the scoop neck and for the back, I'm going to be attaching the tie to that part of the neckline, so that raw edge is going to be hidden away by the tie. I don't need a facing for the scoop neck or for the back. I only need a facing for the v-neck part of it because that's the part that's going to be open, so it needs that binding in order to hide away the raw edge. So I'm going to have to cut out a new facing that's just for the v-neck part of it, then I'm going to sew that, and then we can move on to the tie. I cut out and pinned down right sides together the new facing for just the v-neck part of my neckline. So now I'm just going to sew it with a straight stitch and 3 8 inch seam allowance. I have my facing sewn down onto my blouse and I did just trim away the excess seam allowance. So now what we have to do is fold this inwards and sew it down again. So in order to do that, you're just going to take this, fold it in once so that the raw edge lines up with that seam, and then you're going to fold it in again. Ew, oh my god. And then you're just going to sew it down. Obviously, this is not what it's going to look like. I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's all done. But this is the rough idea of what you have to do to finish off this facing. The facing is all done. This is what it looks like on the outside. And this is what it looks like on the inside. So next, I'm going to move on to sewing the tie around the neckline. Okay, so I was really rushing to finish this blouse just because I really wanted to wear it the next day, so I just quickly went through the last few steps, and obviously I filmed it too, just that I could bring you along with me. But, um, after finishing the blouse, I took a look at those clips that I made, and, um, <laughs> I realized that I was so tired and dehydrated that I am a little bit off my rocker, so if it's frustrating to listen to me talk, I know. I had to listen to myself talk, so if I repeat the same thing three times and you get annoyed, I get it. And if I don't explain something clearly, I get it. So if you don't understand anything about these last few steps in the process, just leave me a comment with a question. Of course, I will answer it because I see all the comments, unless YouTube deletes it, which it does do. But other than that, just in advance, I'm sorry. You know, I was going to change out of this hoodie and put on something nice, but today's not the day. Anyways, it's a new day and we only have a few more things to do. So this is kind of like the home stretch and I want to get this done because I really want to wear this. So I have the blouse in my hands right now. You can see the facing is done like I showed you, but all we have to do is we have to attach the tie to the neckline. So. How am I gonna do that? Okay, so I have my tie right here, and what you wanna do is you have to mark the middle of your tie first because you're gonna match up the middle of your tie to the middle of the back of the neckline. That's mouthful. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find the middle. So I'm gonna match up my ends and then bring it all the way down here. And I got my middle right here. So let me just get a pin from my dress form. There we go. We have it marked. So let me do the same on the blouse. All right. We have it marked too. So now we can just match it up and pin all around the neckline. So like I just showed you, I did mark the middle of my tie and the middle of my neckline with a pin. So all you have to do now is you have to put them right sides together. So this is the right side of my blouse. This is the right side of my tie. And you just match up the pins so that the middles match up. 
So now what you're going to do is you're just going to pin this all around, around the neckline, and you also should pin the tie in the front where you have your scoop neck. I know it's a little messy, let me pin it all first and then I can show you what it looks like. This is a little difficult to show when it's laying flat, but I do have it pinned now. So this is the front of my blouse. So I, you can see that I did pin it in the back, but I have it pinned in the front as well. I just pinned to the scoop neck until I got to the v-neck part of it. So I just pinned until I couldn't pin anymore. And once I got to that edge of the v-neck, that's where I stopped. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sew all along where I pinned. Alrighty, so I sewed what I could of my tie to my neckline, so this is what it looks like so far. And since I used 3 8 inch seam allowance to sew my tie to my neckline, I then folded up 3 8 inch for the rest of the tie on both sides, and I did it on the top as well. And this is just going to get me ready for when I have to sew it, so then I don't really need to worry about the measurements. If you think about it, this is the same technique that I actually used to create the ties on my wrist tie blouse, so that's kind of interesting. I don't know, just wanted to point that out. So the next step for the tie is to take the top, fold it down, and sew it so that it becomes an actual tie and not just some weird ribbon thing around the neckline. So I'm going to start on this side just because it's easier to explain. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take the top, bring it down to the bottom, and just sew it. So that's what it's going to be. I'm just going to sew a straight stitch all along and make sure that it's catching the seam allowance. Now over here where I have this is pinned and this is sewn, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my seam allowance up and I will probably just like iron it or pin it just so that it stays up. And then I'm going to bring this down, bring it so that the edge meets that seam line, and then I'm just going to sew it down. So that's what I'm going to do to finish off this tie and obviously then we have to where the ends we have to finish the ends so we're going to do that next all right so the tie is pretty much sewn this is what it looks like the only thing we have to do are the ends so what i recommend doing is that i actually recommend stopping short when you're sewing your tie together because what you're going to do is you're going to cut from here to the edge so this is what it looks like. You don't have to make it diagonal. You can just keep it straight like it was before, but I like it when it's diagonal at the ends. So then what you're gonna do is you're just going to fold this inwards, both sides. <laughs> I can't do it with one hand, but you're gonna fold it inwards and then sew it together so that it's like hemming. All right, so once I was done with the tie, the only two steps that were left were to do were to put in the elastic in the sleeves and to hem the bottom of the shirt. Now, because it was nighttime and I was kind of rushing to get this done, I could only film bits and pieces of this process, but luckily these two last steps are really easy to explain. So I will be showing you some clips while also explaining how to do them. So let's get started. So the first thing I did was I put the elastic in the sleeves and when I explain how to do this, it might sound like there are a lot of steps, but don't be intimidated because it is actually a very easy thing to do. So in order to put the elastic in, the first thing you have to do is actually create a channel for the elastic. So since I'm using quarter inch elastic, I wanted to create a channel that was about half an inch wide just so that I could have enough room to put my elastic through it. So I took the sleeve and folded it up once half an inch and then again half an inch and then I sewed that down with a straight stitch so that I could create my channel. Now something that is very, very, very important to remember is that you do not want to sew all the way around. When you're sewing to create your channel, make sure that you leave a little gap because that is where you're going to be inserting your elastic. Now the next step is to actually measure the elastic that's going to be going in that channel. So take your elastic, wrap it around your wrist without pulling on it, and make sure to cut a little bit longer than you actually need it to be because that little bit of length is going to be the seam allowance that you need when you are sewing the two ends of your elastic together at the end. Once you have one piece of elastic cut out, use it to measure the other piece of elastic for your other sleeve. Now we can actually put the elastic in the channel. So for this, you're gonna need two safety pins and make sure that your safety pin can fit through the channel because if it's too big, then it's gonna get stuck, obviously. But also if it's too small, it's gonna take a really long time for you to feed your elastic through. So just make sure that it fits snugly inside your channel, but it's also not too big and not too small. So take your safety pin, pin it to the end of your elastic, and now you're going to use that safety pin to guide your elastic through the channel. So put your safety pin into that gap that you left in your channel, and now what you're
you're gonna do is you're going to have to scrunch your fabric over the safety pin. So the way I like to explain it is I use my left hand to scrunch the fabric over the safety pin and then I use my right hand to unscrunch that fabric over the elastic. So by scrunching and unscrunching, that gets your elastic further into the channel. Now, obviously, your elastic is much smaller than your giant sleeve, so it is possible that your elastic could get lost in your channel. So, in order to prevent that from happening, that is where the other safety pin comes in. So, once you have guided your elastic through the channel and it's almost all the way in your channel, you're just going to make sure that you take the other end of your elastic and pin it to the gap that you left in your channel. And what that's going to do is that's going to hold that other end of the elastic in place while you're feeding the other end through your channel so that once you're done feeding them then you can meet both ends of the elastic and sew them together. Now once you have fed your elastic through the entire channel and now both ends of your elastic are peeking out of that gap you can put one end over the other and you can just hand sew a little stitch on top just to hold it in place and now you have an actual loop of elastic that's going through your loop channel. Once you've connected the two ends of your elastic with a little stitch, the only thing you need to do is close up the gap that you left on your channel. Now there are two ways you can do this. You can either take your sleeve to the sewing machine and just use a straight stitch to close up that gap, or you can use a needle and thread to hand sew a basting stitch in that gap just to close it up. Now in my opinion, the second route is easier, so that's actually what I do because we all know I like taking shortcuts, but you can just use either one. And when you have done that, you are done with the sleeves. Now the very last thing you need to do to finish this off is to just hem the bottom of the blouse. So when I cut out my front and back pieces, I actually added a lot of extra length at the bottom just in case I needed it. So when it came to hemming, I needed to put a really wide hem at the bottom. So I folded up my blouse once, um, three quarters of an inch, and then I folded it up again three quarters of an inch, and then I sewed all around to just tack it down. And that is literally it. Now before we do the big reveal, I do just want to take the time to thank all of you for being so kind and so supportive during these past few months. I know it's not really normal to just vanish and I'm so sorry about that. I shouldn't have left it hanging like that, but thank you so much for still being so patient and for waiting for me to come back because I really like doing this and I like giving you a little bit of entertainment for your day. So thank you so much for waiting and for still being so supportive because I love you so much. And what the